Hello, my name is Stephen Waller. I am the coordinator on the Living World July release. Uh, my name is Matt Pennebaker, and I'm a designer on the Living World July release. And welcome to the second July release of the Living World content in July. This is Cutthroat Politics. I know everyone's really excited about uh, this release in particular. Um, before we get started on this, I just want to say this is a really great opportunity, something that we think is pretty unique in the gaming industry in that people are going to have an opportunity to decide the content that's going to be added to Guild Wars 2 and to shape the future of Tyria in this re release. And that's a pretty exciting uh, thing for people to have an opportunity to do. So um, for those people that have been enjoying the uh, first July release, uh, we've had the Bazaar up and running. The Bazaar has been in full effect. The Zephyr Sanctum has landed. And uh, people have been enjoying all of the unique uh, travel skills, movement skills that the Zephyrites have brought, a real joy of movement. Uh, I know I've been enjoying getting around just in and around the labyrinthine cliffs and doing all the different finding movements. Finding the sky crystals. Finding the sky <laughs> crystals, that's been fun and tricky. Uh, <laughs> Fun's a word for it. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So, um, but with all the fun that's been going on, you know, people have not forgotten that there was an assassination that took place uh, in the June content, and that left a seat open on the Captain's Council of Lion's Arch, and we've had two people step up to want to take uh, on those seats, and that is uh, Evan Nashblade, who is the uh, proprietor of the Black Lion Trading Company, a successful businessman in Lion's Arch, and Ellen Keel, a war hero who's been uh, involved in, in helping people throughout uh, previous releases. And uh, so they both traveled to the Zephyr Sanctum uh, on word from the Captain's Council that if they can secure a trade agreement with the Zephyrites, that the monetary value that that's going to add to Lion's Arch is going to be worth uh, getting them the uh, seat on the Captain's Council as the monetary portion of the contribution. Um, Autumn is showing here that you're going to receive an email uh, when you first log in, and you'll get a little bit of a uh, greeting from each of the candidates and you'll get a support token from each of those, and we'll talk about um, what that means in, in just a minute. Um, so to recap sort of uh, how they're going about trying to get this uh, election or how they're going about trying to get the support from players so that the Captain's Council will elect them, um, they are going to go and try to work out this trade agreement with the Zephyrites, and they've been there for the past two weeks trying to get to know them. Um, and now the Zephyrites are actually ready. They've kind of gotten to know them, and they're ready to offer up this uh, potential trade agreement. But there's a twist. They've said that they value the support of the people behind either of the candidates, and so they're going to leave it up to the people of Tyria to decide which candidate uh, is ultimately going to get the trade agreement. They want to see um, who is going to support each of those candidates, because for them it's important to have the support of the people. So that's really up to the, you know, the ante here. And now uh, Ellen and Evan are both coming through with new promises and um, are offering up exciting new uh, games for people to play to try and garner that player support. So um, Evan Nashblade has uh, stepped forward and said he'd be willing to reduce the price of Black Lion chest keys for four weeks. He's also going to uh, investigate or research in the Fractals of the Mist, the Fall of Abaddon, which I know people are pretty excited <laughs> about. And um, also, he's offering up a new game, which is South Sun Survivor, which is a pretty exciting, it's very thrilling, it's kind of based on um, surviving against up to 20 other players, uh, a game that should be a lot of fun for people to participate in. It's kind of the type of game where the values that he believes in, sort of being cunning um, and you know surviving as a businessman that he values. And of course, not to be undone, we've got Ellen, who is saying that she's going to get the cost of waypoint travel reduced for four weeks. She's going to pull the strings necessary to get that done in her new position. And also, she's going to investigate uh, research in the Fractals of the Mist for the Thalma Nova uh, reactor explosion that occurred. And um, also a game for uh, continuing to get to know the Zephyrite skills. She's going to have a Aspect Arena game, which takes the whole skills of the Zephyrites to a new level, because now it's not just the movement skills. It's also um, some really cool 
fighting skills. So, uh, and then both of them are saying that they're going to open up a, a round of permanent games for people to participate in, things like the Crab Toss and South Sun Survival. So um, that, among all the rewards that people are going to be able to get from participating, are really cool. So I'll talk really quick um, about the support tokens, which we saw you get in the email. You'll be able to get those. Uh, you'll get your initial ones from each of the uh, proponents or the uh, candidates, uh, so that they're hoping that you'll put the first one in the baskets <laughs> for them. And uh, Autumn is showing here uh, how you go about doing that. The baskets have been set up on Zephyr Sanctum uh, because that's who's actually going to be doing the counting, uh, the, counting the support tokens before they tally up and say, okay, this is who the people support, and we can see who Autumn is uh, supporting here. <laughs> and, of course, everyone in the office has their yeah. own uh, favorites, Everyone's right? a little biased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got their own reasons. We even had some buttons made up that you know, said, I support Evan or you know, vote for Keel. Uh, so everyone here is excited as what we've seen uh, on the forums and you know, in some of the uh, postings on uh, websites that have actually reported this content. So um, the support tokens. You can get the support tokens for, from participating in the content, and uh, you'll be able to take them and drop them into those containers. And when you do, uh, you'll get a support button, which is a consumable, right? Mm -hmm. That's, yep. And uh, when you, uh, you know, activate that consumable, you'll see that you get your button, uh, which is sort of floating over your shoulder there that shows who you're supporting, so that when you are doing content, uh, you'll actually be getting credit or giving uh, credit for that particular candidate. So, for instance, not only when you participate in the, the new games and uh, events that we've got going on uh, for this particular uh, release, but also if you do a, uh, a dungeon run, you complete a dungeon, or if you do your dailies while you're supporting a particular candidate, you're going to be able to uh, get achievements for that. Uh, there's also a special uh, game or uh, event. It's actually kind of a challenge event, uh, which is called the Canada Trials, which is a, uh, it, it's kind of a unique thing, actually. It's, you're going to be able to go in and provide support to Ellen or Evan uh, while they try to prevent Aetherblade pirates from taking a treasure pile uh, from a crashed Aetherblade ship from all the uh, plundering that they've been doing. And uh, when you go in there, you'll be able to... Um, uh, try to survive actually uh, multiple waves of pirate attacks and uh, you know the, I guess the two things that you're trying to do there is one is survive <laughs> uh, and the other one is make sure that uh, some of the special Aetherblade pirates that are dedicated just to grabbing the gold uh, don't get away with all the gold so yeah we really want to uh, take this opportunity to let players decide the difficulty of the content they were going to play uh, and so you'll see when the scene is complete here, Autumn's going to talk to uh, Nash Blade's assistant and uh, she's going to pick tier one because it's her first time in here. But you'll be able to unlock harder tiers and, uh, you know, as, and be able to choose when you, when you enter what difficulty you really want to try. And we made this quite challenging just so that, you know, we can let you ramp it up to really hard levels. Uh, and you get rewarded, you know, accordingly. Yeah, there are uh, four tiers for this, and I think you know we did our best to uh, balance that so that in the lower tiers, um, you can solo it. It does still require skill, of course. <laughs> um, you can also play with your party, which is great. I know a lot of people enjoy you know playing with their friends, and here we've got the first wave uh, coming in of the Aetherblade pirates. Um, you're going to be able to get, as I think I uh, mentioned before, not only the uh, gold and karma uh, from this, but also uh, support tokens and a chance at the uh, Aetherblade weapons, which is uh, really cool and uh, you know a good reason to uh, participate in this, besides the fact that we think it's going to be really fun. Yeah, you know, I've, I've played this a number of times myself and have just had a ton of fun. You just get to hack and slash through you know, scores of Aetherblade pirates, and that's always a fun time. Yeah, it's, it's a good opportunity, too, for people to kind of play with their builds and really figure out, like, uh, whether it's uh, solo or within a party, uh, sort of what the right balance is to kind of take down the waves of the pirates, but also uh, catch the ones. I think we've, we saw one coming in, the one with the, the bag over their head there is dedicated to running to the treasure piles uh, strictly. So uh, all they're doing is running back and forth to grab the gold. And the other ones are going to be coming in to fight with you and, and hopefully distract you so that they can get away 
um, with the goal. But it's really fun to to sort of dial in and experiment with uh, some of the um, you know skills or your traits that you've got, or maybe the weapons that you're using, uh, both for yourself and in conjunction with your party. So. Um, we think this is a lot of fun, and certainly as it goes up in tiers, it gets uh, more, <laughs> more difficult, as, as Matt was saying. Um, tier 3 is going to be one of those levels where you're probably going to need to be in a party uh, to you know, complete it. I say probably because we've seen some really, really good love players out there. Love to see someone prove us wrong on that yes, one. But, yeah. love it. Um, but for most people, it's probably going to be something where you're going to want to join uh, up with a party and uh, go in there because it's going to get tougher. Uh, certainly uh, tier four is going to be a very difficult uh, level where you pretty much are going to have to be in a party and probably a pretty skilled uh, party, good teamwork, good communication to be successful. Um, there's probably going to be somebody who will post a video <laughs> of them soloing it, which we love to see. Um, but it is, it, it, it's, a, it's a very fun activity you can repeat uh, and I should say activity, it's actually set up as events, but um, you can replay the same tiers over and over again, or after you're done with the tier uh, and you've unlocked the next tier, you can choose to you know, go back down or repeat that new tier until you've really worked out um, your teamwork and, and your skills, and then you, know, you can go all the way up to and keep replaying all the tiers up through, uh, through tier four. And there's lots of uh, sort of different strategies you can try to employ that uh, you know you can you can try and just focus on those plunderers. But if you let too big of a party of of the rest of the Aetherblade pirates show up, you're just you're done for. And the second, if uh, I don't think she's gonna she's gonna get defeated on this one, but if Autumn were to uh, get defeated, that would end that would fail the the mission because there's no one left to defend the treasure. And also, if the plunderers manage to plunder the entire pile, then she also fails. But. Right, and you can see... Autumn's pretty good, so I think she's going to pull out of this one. <laughs> you can see in the upper right-hand corner is where they're keeping track of uh, how much time you have remaining and uh, how much treasure is remaining, as well as the number of Aetherblade pirates that you've killed, which is going to be one of those things that I think probably people mm -hmm. want to brag about a little bit. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I did Tier 4, and, you know, I killed this many pirates. How many did you kill? Um, that's something that should be pretty fun for, for people to to talk about and probably trash talk a little yeah. bit about as well, right? <laughs> um, uh, this is still taking part in uh, the Labyrinthine Cliffs area. I should point out that um, Kirill and Lisa, the environment artists and prop artists on our team, just did an amazing job mm. um, with this area. It's really beautiful and the backdrop is, uh, you know, with the clear blue waters and, uh, you know, the, the high spiral and uh, spiraling way to get up to the cliffs is um, a pretty unique and beautiful map. Uh, we think we've got a lot of um, great feedback on that from people who've been playing it. That they just think the, the style of the art is is really fantastic. Yeah, so so. so Autumn uh, can not not die for the next few <laughs> seconds and points her camera upwards. You can see just just you know sort of where she is right now. Yeah. Uh, so she's underneath or, the crashed yeah, yeah, Aetherblade she's... ship. And so yeah, we think that uh, you know it's kind of a fun thing that this big battle is going on. Um, in a beautiful area, and of course, there's the treasure right there to be had if you can just survive <laughs> long enough. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a great she's opportunity almost, almost for people that enjoy sort of dialing in their uh, their character spec, um, but also maybe for people who don't normally get into that to experiment a little bit uh, and play it over and over again and see you know what things are working and what things uh, aren't working. And so um, we're expecting that this is going to be something that people enjoy playing quite a bit. Um, for the fun, and then also for getting, you know, support tokens and that chance uh, at getting the Aetherblade weapons. So, yeah. And Autumn won, so she can go collect up her loot bags and see what she what she got. And lo and behold, she managed to get an Aetherblade weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't set up to work that way, by the way. And so, um, at this point... Scout's on her. <laughs> yes. Uh, at this point, the... Uh, the NPCs come back in and they're glad to see that the treasure was taken and then you get the opportunity to um, choose what the next tier is that you uh, that you want to participate in. Yeah. So if uh, Autumn talks to Evan's assistant, we can see that now she can take it up a notch to do tier two. Or if you just had fun doing that one and you just want to try to reconfigure uh, your build, then you can play it again. We're, for now, we're going to step out of here as much fun as we have um, playing this content. <laughs> we're going to go take a look at, uh, at some of our other uh, content that we've got going on in the game. And, of course, there she is um, with her 
support <laughs> buff still in full effect. And there, of course, is the Labyrinthine Cliff. We hope, we hope everyone's been having a lot of fun running around, exploring the Labyrinthine, uh, Labyrinthine Cliffs and uh, getting to use the new movement skills and taking advantage of a lot of the vendors that are there that we've <laughs> brought in from uh, other places around the world. So it gives a bit more of a uh, opportunity for you to do uh, some of the things that you want to do you know, for crafting or whatever uh, while you're in this one location. So here we are. Talking to uh, Ellen Keel to go check out the Aspect Arena, which uh, was a game she set up sort of to pay tribute to, to the Zephyrite hosts, uh, you know, and let people sort of play around with those movement skills some more, as Stephen mentioned earlier, but then also, you know, they're not just about jumping and dashing. There's, you know, there's fighting these guys. So, uh, yeah, know. that's going to be pretty interesting because <laughs> thus far, people have seen these sort of mild-mannered Zephyrites, <laughs> uh, very zen-like, uh, with their singing and everything. But uh, they, they do have the ability to bring it with some fighting skills, and we get to see that here. So right now, Autumn's uh, picked the aspect of the sun, uh, which is about sort of keeping your distance and uh, you know, poking at guys from far away and. You know, uh, just you, you know, burning them up with with sunlight and stuff like that. So yeah, some of the uh, the cool sun skills. I know there's one. Uh, we were we we're kind of internally calling it like black hole sun or something. <laughs> um, maybe you want to mention something about that because that's one of my favorites. Sure. Well, Autumn just sent it off. She's created her own tiny star and then uh, out in the air detonated it into a black hole, which will pull nearby enemies into it, including off of ledges. So it, it can be a really fun, really devastating skill to use. Yeah. Uh, and so the gameplay of this uh, is, you know, it's a competition to uh, see who can collect the most crystals uh, and bring them back to their their own base and charge up these uh, sort of aspect conduits. So she's grabbed one of the crystals, which is weighing her down greatly, and then she's delivering it to the, the lightning conduit. And, uh, you know, now they've delivered that, and she can go back out and find another one. Um, if, if everyone else hasn't picked them up already. And, you know, for people that really kind of want to get interested in one particular um, aspect, and she actually used a sort of <laughs> secret passageway there um, with one of the sun skills, um, they can, you know, pick this one and play it the whole time. But you can, at your base, uh, sort of re-equip your skills or choose a new aspect during the game. So if you are uh, wanting to, for whatever reason, maybe the team that you're playing against uh, is stacked up against you in a particular way, you do have that opportunity to go back and sort of change out whether or not you want to be the wind or the, the lightning-based uh, aspect skills. So here she's uh, helping protect one of our uh, folks from the Living World teams and or QA who are <laughs> gratefully helping us uh, fill this out uh, for the game today. Yeah, so you can see some, some wind, wind aspect skills going on and some lightning aspect skills going on. And I think she's maybe done for here in a second. But What are some of your uh, favorite skills from the wind uh, aspects? I would have to say uh, wind sphere is as far away my favorite skill, I think probably in this whole game. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you throw this, this sphere of wind out uh, at your enemy, and if it hits them, it bounces back towards you, not at you, but near you. And if you can manage to catch it, you just spike it back in their face for some devastating damage. And do you have a lightning favor? Uh, lightning's just kind of strong all around. The one you just saw executed is just a really big, powerful smash, and that's always fun to just land on a group of people. Um, with lightning, you can uh, sort of create a, a circle of, you know, that, that traps people in with you. And if you can get, get a few people in there and land that big smash, it's just just lots of fun. Yeah, and the movement skills still come into play in this. Um, in fact, have extra uses. The, like we saw Autumn yeah. a little earlier sun dash through, um, through a gate that, uh, uh, you know, just shortcuts her around a little bit. Um, you know, there's a little more, a lot of the stuff we had in Zephyr Sanctum where you could, you know, find little shortcuts here and there and get to things that you weren't quite sure you were going to be able to get to. Um, you know, using, using those wind jumps and the lightning loops and stuff. Yeah, and there are a couple of uh, lightning towers is what mm. I was going to call them. I don't know if we ever had a, a real good name <laughs> for that, but uh, there are a couple of key ones, uh, sort of higher raised from the center uh, fighting area to the side locations, <laughs> excuse me, um, where we include the, uh, the crystals, the crystals that are spawning periodically. Um, you can, you know, uh, tether across, which gives you a good advantage, and of course you still have the the big wind jump, um, which gets you out of some uh, tight spots sometimes as well. Here we've got, uh, looks like a pretty good battle going on <laughs> between uh, lightning and a wind. And so lightning is uh, sort of all about getting up close and just 
really sort of heavy, heavy hitting, close range attacks. Down goes on him. <laughs> I think she got two on one, so she didn't, she didn't stand too much of a chance there. But uh, yeah, and then wind is all about sort of just moving around a whole lot. It's your really movement based, and they're all fairly movement based, but wind more than any with your, you know, you can leap up really high and get away and you can become like the wind to escape faster or just to get closer even if you just want to try and smash on those wind slashes as fast as possible. Yep, and we also, uh, I'll point out, besides, I should have said earlier too that uh, all of the effects that you guys see with the movement skills and stuff, uh, James Showworker did a great job on uh, creating those. There's her patented <laughs> uh, <laughs> solar dash or, um, on him using that. Uh, but we also had some support on this map from uh, Darren. Mm -hmm. And again, it just, it, you know, the overall style of the Zephyrites is really kind of an interesting look that uh, people have enjoyed. And here's another opportunity for us to sort of be up in the clouds. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't seen it yet, or maybe I've missed it, but there are plenty of opportunities for you to get knocked off of the uh, area and, and fall to your untimely death in this game. And here it looks like uh, Red Team. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we sort of maintained what we started with um, Sanctum Sprint, where the rewards, you know, for activities have definitely been taken up a notch in the last uh, last release and continuing on in this one. Uh, you know, we want people to feel rewarded for playing yeah. for playing these games. You know, it's it's part of our game and it should feel you know rewarded as such. Yeah, we really wanted to make sure that uh, all the games that we had. Uh, in this release were really well rewarded, like Matt was saying. And, and again, there's that opportunity in there for the uh, aspect mm -hmm. uh, rucksack, which is a really cool looking uh, <laughs> back item. So I think people are going to enjoy playing that and, and hopefully uh, enjoy you know, the look mm -hmm. of that um, back item because it's pretty, pretty unique. One note, I don't know if, if, if you guys have touched on this, if anyone's mm -hmm. touched on this in the past, but uh, there were sort of um, paintings on the walls and mm -hmm. on the platforms in yep. the aspect arena and that, that are in all of the labyrinthine cliffs that were sort of hints at what mm -hmm. skills might be helpful to use right there. Yeah, Little that's pro good, tip. Good, <laughs> good point. I mean, that is one thing that we've tried to do too. Is you know, just like traversing from the bottom of the labyrinthine cliffs up to the top, uh, we want people to sort of learn and understand what's going on. And so that's just one of the things uh, that helps reinforce, like when it's a good time to make use of a particular uh, aspect skill. Mm -hmm. So here we are with uh, <laughs> Captain Evan Nashblade, who is patiently waiting his turn. <laughs> We've got some uh, some people ready to go into South Sun Survival. Yeah, so here we have South Sun Survival about to start up, which is, yeah, just as Stephen mentioned earlier, a, a game about outlasting your opponents uh, with very limited resources on a very you know, the game is simple. sparsely <laughs> filled island. So everyone's going to start around the uh, bonfire, and there's a limited number of rations and weapons available, and you can choose to either dash in there and try to get something and hopefully get out before somebody takes you out. Maybe grab some rations or you can just book on out of there, uh, survive, go around the island and try to find rations elsewhere and not take that mm -hmm. risk. Yeah, and there's, yeah, and, uh, notice that uh, Autumn has some hunger going on, which is, oh, looks like someone found her. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. I would say the, the first, first couple minutes of the game, uh, you're in a grace period, so if you want to respawn on them. Uh, oh, it automatically happens. <laughs> uh, in which you get to keep competing. Um, eventually, it becomes a battle for, you know, last, last person standing. Um, yeah, and, we wanted to make sure people had an opportunity mm -hmm. to kind of get used to how the game plays rather than, you know, you jump in, somebody's <laughs> played it 50 times already, and they take you out right away. So there is that grace period, which is cool. Like Autumn just uh, landed herself a kill. So. Nice shot. <laughs> and <laughs> turnabout is fair. <laughs> yes. Uh, one thing you notice, see, uh, there's um, sort of locations. Uh, what, I don't remember what we ended up calling them. It was uh, you know, places where you can try and find uh, scavenge supplies. Um, you know, maybe you'll get a, an arrow, maybe you'll find nothing, mm -hmm. maybe you'll find some rations, maybe you'll find a really awesome trap that you can lay for other players. Uh, and then in addition to that, there's ration bushes uh, all over, or, you know, fruit bushes all over the, the island that you can ra uh, salvage for, mm -hmm. for rations to, to keep your hunger at bay. Yeah, I think one of the things, uh, so Leif, one of the designers that set this up, and I should say uh, Matthew did the candidate trials, which is really awesome. Um, Not me, and for Matthew. Yeah, <laughs> Matthew, uh, Matthew Medina. Um, one of the things about this that's interesting is it, it really is about sort of taking care of um, what you get. You know, if you shoot that arrow, it's gone. You can potentially go over there and pick it up, um, <laughs> but it's not like you have an infinite supply uh, available 
available to you at all times. You can actually pick up multiple arrows, but once you've depleted the ones that you've um, you know shot, then you got to you have to go find some more. And so part of this is is really making good use of um, the supplies that you find and get, and knowing when to use them. That was like a, a no look kill right there. That was, that was awesome. Um, and and figuring out good places around the island. There are various camps on the island where you can get uh, supplies through through scavenging and. You know, I know when we were playing this that it was really kind of a, a very fun but tense kind of uh, game where, you know, you're kind of always looking over your shoulder uh, for opportunity, uh, but also out of fear for your life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you, you know, you have to get rations, otherwise, you're, you know, your health is just going to continue to tick uh, down and you will die. So it's not like you can just go find one place <laughs> and, and hide the whole game. You have to get out there, um, which really makes it kind of an exciting um, and fun sort of strategy um, for, for how you go about it. Do you rush in? Do you find a good hiding spot and pop out around a, a camp? Uh, all those things, I think, make yep. it really, really cool. I'd like to touch on uh, what has happened to Autumn now is after the grace period ended and she was killed, uh, you know, she's, she's out of the fight officially, but that doesn't mean there's nothing for her to do. She is now a revenge spirit and uh, can follow other players around, picking up uh, what we call revenge moats that will power up her skills, and she can just lay traps that can uh, mm -hmm. They're going to, you know, call attention to other people or maybe, you know, summon yeah. a, a Karka to, <laughs> to do her bidding. Yes. There she, she happened to drop some Karka love on, I don't know what player, <laughs> what player that was. But, well, I uh, think she just made another revenge spirit right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really kind of funny because um, I found, you know, when I got killed, that I was like, oh, I'm going to follow around the person that killed me and really, <laughs> really haunt them and try to cause them, you know, grief. Mm -hmm. um, so it's fun because, you know, if some, somebody's doing really well, you'll end up seeing like, you know, five or six or ten uh, potentially of these sort of spirits. Mm -hmm. And they can't see you, yeah. but you can see, you can see the other spirits. So you know that there are a bunch of people around there uh, really looking for some revenge for their death. And it's fun to explore uh, South Sun, you know, in this environment too. It's kind of a different way mm -hmm. to explore another one of the maps that's uh, newer uh, in Guild Wars 2 that uh, people have, have had fun on. But it just adds kind of a different uh, wrinkle to mm -hmm. your experience of, of it being a little bit more of a uh, desolate island. So now it looks like we're down to two contestants. So uh, hopefully they've got enough rations to survive <laughs> or they're able to... Um, defeat the other player. Here's somebody that's managed to stay alive. I can't see the name of him, but lucky, lucky survivor right there. <laughs> and of course, now we've got a few moats that are on their heels, looking to bring a timely so death to them. That was an alarm trap that, that that player just triggered, which is pretty scary because it alerts everyone to your location on the map, but yeah. also. Uh, um, damages you and gives you a uh, debuff that makes you take more damage if you're moving. So you have to, you, you know, if you can survive running away, you, you go for it. But if not, you just kind of have to stand there and, and hope no one finds you before your debuff runs off. Yeah, off. I think you may have mentioned it before, but the uh, the traps that make you drop all your rations too, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that is one of those moments that's funny if you pull it off on somebody <laughs> else because it's, it's almost like all of your stuff pops out and lands on the ground. All this stuff that you've been trying so hard to collect. Um, and then you can try to pick them up, but other people can pick them up as well. And, and so there, there we have the winner. Uh, looks like an Asura uh, is the winner of that game. And uh, again, hopefully uh, really, really rewarding both in you know, the gameplay and the fun that you'll get from that, but in the rewards that you have an opportunity uh, to get, including the uh, Desert Rose, which has a rare chance mm -hmm. uh, to drop out of playing this. And uh, I'll, while I'm looking at it, I'll say great job by Teo on the, uh, the concept aren't there. Hmm. Uh, concept group here does a, a really great, great job. A little subtle thing, I don't know if anyone will pick up on this, but Autumn just uh, drank her sips of karma while in, in the activity, which was sort of oversight that you, that we <laughs> finally noticed and took care of. Yes. Tomorrow. <laughs> So yeah, we've, uh, we've taken a look at the Aspect Arena, and we've taken a look at the uh, South Sun Survival and the uh, Candidate Trials. Uh, but again, while you're supporting your candidate, you can participate in other content in Guild Wars. There are uh, two different achievement tracks this time around. We've got one uh, that is Evan and one that is Ellen, both of which have a uh, Meta Achievement Award mm -hmm. associated with them. Uh, and you can participate in doing things like your dailies, uh, running dungeons, et cetera, to be able to complete those achievements 
and contribute to getting uh, the, the meta achievements, which are uh, minis of both of, of the candidates. And uh, let's see, what did I not mention here? So the election is going to, uh, or the ability to you know, contribute your support tokens is going to last up until 11 a.m. Pacific time on August the 5th. And the, uh, the Zephyrites are going to be leaving and the bazaar is going to be ending on August the 6th. So get out there while you can and, and you know, play the content, have fun playing the content and support because this is your opportunity to decide uh, what future content you want in Guild Wars 2 and how you're going to shape the future of Tyria with whoever gets elected to uh, the Captain's Council. So uh, this isn't going to be something where, you know, a week later you still have that opportunity. So we, we really are looking forward to, I know I'm going to be in there playing. Uh, <laughs> we're looking forward to seeing all of you uh, participating in this. And, um, you know, so we really hope that you appreciate, you know, all the effort that's you know, gone into this and that you enjoy the content and the opportunity uh, to change the future, you know, content that goes into the game and uh, shaping, you know, through player support and participation uh, where Guild Wars 2 goes in the future. So, as always, we really appreciate everybody that logs in and, and plays the game. And, uh, you know, we're fans as well, so you'll see us in there uh, <laughs> playing it over, over the next two, two weeks. I don't, yeah. I don't know if there's anything you want to... You know, just, you know, don't forget to show your support. You know, every, every, uh, every vote matters. And so, uh, you know, it's, we let you get more than one. So, you know, use them all to make sure your, your favorite candidate wins. We'll see you in the game. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, showing up today. And... Uh, Thanks again. We look so, forward to seeing oh, you. And, uh, make sure to subscribe to the... Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, follow our channel. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was going to forget that. Follow our channel. It's a great opportunity to see what's going on in, in Guild Wars and get a little sneak peek in advance. So uh, we love doing these for you guys, and uh, we hope you, know, you guys uh, appreciate this. And we've seen a lot of good comments, and we're always looking to take feedback from our players uh, and, and listen to our players and, and work with the community uh, you know, to, to shape the future. That's part of what the living world is all about is it's a constantly changing world and and you know supporting is one way that we can work with the community um, one of many different ways that we're looking to uh, take feedback and work with the community to develop Guild Wars uh, for the future so a lot of exciting things to look forward to with the living world first one is uh, coming up tomorrow with the cutthroat politics and uh, we think it's gonna be a lot of fun we look forward to seeing you guys there thank you thanks